Hey Hopesters, it is the Hope Daily Vlog and um, it's great to be with you this morning. Uh, I'm just going to run through a couple of notices ever so quickly, which is what I like to do, uh, just so it gives you guys a time to kind of log in. Uh, make sure you guys say hello as well within the comments section and then I can say hello to you guys. Um, I am also uh, trying to do this with this stand and the Bible. so. Uh, what that means is I'm not always going to be able to pick up your comments in time, but I will get back to them lately. So here are the only two uh, really important notices, or, or, or maybe maybe it's three. Here we go. So on Sunday morning, uh, we've got the live and interactive service at 10.30, uh, but in the evening, uh, we've got Eden 2.0 on Sunday evening, and it's going to be with a live audience. Now, you can't just kind of come along. We're asking you to kind of join in online and kind of interact with it that way. But the reason why we are doing it is because we are ramping up uh, to moving towards um, um, uh, public services, which is going to be absolutely brilliant because it's been a long, long time. The other thing that you guys need to know is we are taking a break from breakfast at Timothy. So we're taking a break from that. You might see that or you'll probably see that coming back in the September time and we're also taking a break from the Something More podcast on the Monday night and the reason why we're going to be taking a break from that, that's only going to be for about three weeks or four weeks or something like that, is because uh, Abby, my wife, uh, uh, is pregnant and the baby is due in around about four days or five days or something along those lines. So I will be uh, helping out around the house and going on paternity leave. But Jamie and Josh are uh, uh, capable of keeping things running, but we are taking a break from the something more. So, guys, um, what I wanted to do uh, this morning is, and, and I've just kind of been thinking about this uh, last night, been thinking about it this morning. Um, we're going to be looking at the book of Revelation. Now, we're going to do it uh, shortly or briefly. That's probably the best word. And we're going to we're going to do it briefly, even though we could spend a long time on it. But uh, let me just say about the book of Revelation, it's often been monopolized by wingbats and weirdos. And um, it's actually a really, really good and encouraging book. John Calvin wrote a commentary on every book of the Bible except for the book of Revelation. And a lot of people have been advised not to read the book of Revelation. There are some kind of different kind of opinions and views. Uh, I don't uh, sign up to uh, popular end times teaching which is all a wee bit weird and a little bit scary and a little bit escapist. And if you want to know a little bit why I don't, uh, you can stick a comment in there or you can go back and look at the Something More podcast, which we called It's Not the End of the World. But here's the kind of basic story around uh, the book of Revelation. Hey, morning, guys. Uh, the basic story is this. You've got the Apostle John, who is like the last Jedi, okay? So Jesus has died. All of the other apostles have died. They've all been martyred, except for John the Apostle. John the Apostle, according to church history, so it's not in the scripture, but it's according to church history, has been boiled in oil. And so his body is just covered with scars. Uh, the Romans uh, basically trying to kill him because of, of his faith. And they've boiled him in oil. And because the flames kept going out, uh, they decided that their gods or fate or whatever had stepped in and that he wasn't to be burnt to death. Uh, so, so what they decided to do was to send him to prison on the island of Patmos. So he is on a prison island. It's kind of like Alcatraz. I don't know if you've seen the Nicolas Cage, Sean Connery film, The Rock. It's kind of like that, okay? So there he is. He's on this island. And um, uh, on this island, uh, he, 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 you know, Rome has conquered the whole world. Okay, it is the great evil empire and the Darth Vader of the time. Again, this is a little bit disputed. I think it's the Emperor Domitian. The temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed. And uh, there John is uh, probably looking at seeing out the rest of his life upon this island. Now, he's an apostle and he oversees uh, seven major churches in seven major cities. You can read about them in Revelation 2 and 3. So he's on this island, and then this is what it says. It says, 
I am John, reading from verse 9, your brother. In Jesus, we are partners in suffering or tribulation. I believe the tribulation goes from Christ's first coming until his second coming. And in, in the kingdom and in patient endurance, I was exiled on the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and speaking about Jesus. It was the Lord's Day, it was Sunday, and I was worshipping in the spirit. He's like lost in praise and worship, maybe speaking in tongues, maybe. Suddenly, I heard a loud voice behind me, a voice that sounded like a trumpet blast. It said, write down what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. So we're just going to stop there. So, so notice that he's been boiled in oil, his body is covered with scars, all of the other apostles are dead, Jesus is dead, he is on the, 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 the island of Patmos, and what is he doing whilst he's in lockdown? You know, what is he doing? He's not drinking, maybe some of us have been turning to drink during lockdown, he's not, he's not gambling, he's not... He's not uh, um, trying to comfort, eat his way through his lockdown. He's not, as in some people do within prisons, he's not just sat there doing bench presses. He's not there, you know, involved in using spice, which is a drug which is highly available in prisons. What is he doing? He finds himself in lockdown. And what is he doing? He is worshipping the Lord on the Lord's day. Now, if I was watching, I'd be giving myself some emojis because that's exactly what we need to be doing. Although we are coming out of lockdown, what we need to be doing is to be continuing to praise the Lord, particularly on the Lord's day, but continuing to praise the Lord and not allowing ourselves to be dragged into negative and destructive habits. We also need to be you know, uh, uh, focusing our mind upon Christ. And only when we focus our mind upon Christ are we able to get through uh, lockdown. Here's what it says, verse 12. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. These are representatives, uh, uh, these are kind of representative of the churches. And standing in the midst of the lampstands was the Son of Man, he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. He's dressed like a priest. His head and his hair were white like wool, speaking of, of, of the, the wisdom and, and speaking with the same kind of uh, painting Christ in the same kind of language or imagery that God the Father is painting with. He's basically saying Jesus is God. And his eyes were bright like flames of fire. His feet were as bright as bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand. Now, this is the seven angels of the seven churches. And a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was as bright as the sun in all its brilliance. So what happens when, when the Apostle John encounters uh, Jesus Christ within worship? He is, he is overwhelmed at his awesome uh, brilliance. We too need to be uh, overwhelmed by Jesus Christ's awesome brilliance. I think sometimes we, we have become over familiar uh, with Jesus, again, particularly within lockdown where worship has kind of been reserved to kind of clicks and it's been reserved to kind of emojis and it's been reserved to kind of comments. And I'm not taking anything away from that, but uh, sometimes we can become incredibly casual with our relationship with God. You know, the Bible says this, do not neglect the congregation of the brethren as some are inclined to do. It's a very easy time to kind of be tapping out. This isn't the time you should be tapping out. This is the time that you should be kind of pursuing Christ. And as you pursue Christ, may, may, may your heart be kind of enraptured by what the theologians used to call the beatific vision, the vision of Jesus Christ in his awesomeness. I just want to remind you guys, Jesus Christ is still awesome. And I, I don't know what the future holds, but I do know who holds the future. And, you know, I just want to kind of remind you of that this morning. I, I don't know, man, I'm preaching myself happy, but I just want to remind you of that this morning. 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one who died. Look, I'm alive forever and ever. 
and I hold the keys of death and the grave. He's got the keys of death and the grave buckled onto uh, his jeans. You know, uh, you don't need to be worried about your family members. Okay, you, you don't need to be worried about those who are shielded, uh, who, who are, are close to you. I'm, I'm not promising you that they are going to kind of get through this uh, 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 um, fine, but I can promise you that God is the one who numbers our days. We are absolutely invincible outside of the predetermined plan and purposes of God. That's not an excuse to be foolish. Still wash your hands. Still wear a mask when you're on public transport or whatever the government is saying. You know, make wise decisions, but you are absolutely invincible. You are bulletproof, okay, outside of or, or, or inside of the predetermined plans and purposes of God, which is really good news. It's, it's exciting for me. Anyway, hopefully, guys, speak back to me in the comments. Hopefully, uh, this is good news uh, to you guys as well. I mean, he goes on, he says, write down uh, uh, what you see. And then he, he, he begins to, to uh, give the messages uh, to the seven churches. And then as he, as, he, as he gives the messages to the seven churches, he then begins to kind of unveil uh, what his plans and purposes are for, for the earth. And what we see is we see seven sets of judgments. I think it's the seal judgments. And then the trumpet judgments and the bold judgments. Again, I believe uh, that is God's judgments that run from well, all of creation, but are intensifying from the first coming of Christ until the second coming of Christ. So it's it's coronavirus, it's Ebola, it's SARS, it's economic recessions, it's it's wars, it's all of that sort of stuff. It is it is normal. That that is in inverted commas. It is normal between uh, Christ's first coming and his second coming and it will intensify but here's the thing like i don't need to lose sight of and, and this is the thing which which i believe uh, would have sustained john uh in that time you know and, and, and it's a passage which i kind of often kind of come back to i hope it's a passage that kind of lifts you and, and encourages you and blesses you uh this is this now into revelation 21 He's gone through and he's painted the picture of all of human history. And then he says, But then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a beautiful bride prepared for a husband. And I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, the home of God is now amongst his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will take the tear from every eye and there will be no more death and no more sorrow and no more crying and no more pain for the old things have passed away. Um, uh, he finishes with this great vision of what the world will become when Jesus Christ returns. And obviously it's our job to, to, to bring some of the stuff from the world to come into the here and now. But we look forward to something that is so awesome and so beautiful that we do not have the language to describe it. And, you know, there will be colours which, which, which we haven't known yet. And there will be sounds and there will be smells. And everything that was good about this world, I think R.C. Sproul in his commentary uh, said, uh, the rivers and the mountains and the trees uh, will be kind of redeemed and, and stripped of all their sin and stripped of all of their fallenness and 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 guys yeah I just I, I just want to kind of just leave you with that and kind of remind you of that all over again uh, that the the end of the story is Revelation chapter twenty one it is Eden two point zero and yeah um, hopefully that which was able to get John through lockdown and he eventually did get released. That which was able to get John through lockdown is able to get you through lockdown. So as we as we move to this kind of last part, what I want you to do is focusing on Christ. I want you to start picking up pace rather than uh, beginning to slow down. So if you've got any comments or questions, good morning, everyone. Um, someone's saying, God bless you. I think you're logged in on the Hope Church Lancaster site. So I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, love you and good morning to you. Um, uh, I'm just going to pray for you guys again. Uh, I keep my eyes open. 
just so I can see uh, any comments, but hopefully that's encouraging. Uh, it's a great day as well, guys. The weather's pretty good, so go out there and flip and have an awesome day. Go and have a socially distant walk. Go and have a socially distant barbecue or picnic. Do you know what I mean? Just have an awesome day and uh, tune in tomorrow at 10.30. So, uh, Father, um, I just want to pray uh, for our guys uh, and those who are watching. Uh, Lord, I just want to ask that you would bless them and that you would keep them and that your face would shine upon them. And Lord, I, I just pray that in the midst of a time in which we could allow ourselves to, to uh, have a great day too. Hey, God bless you. Uh, at a time in which we could allow our lives to be uh, taken up with, with um, uh, purchasing or, or alcohol or gambling, uh, Lord, or, or some of the other negative and destructive things, loneliness. Uh, Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, like the Apostle John, uh, Lord, that, that we might understand uh, who we serve, uh, Lord, that, that we might seek after him and that we might uh, move forward with a vision of the future in our hearts and in our minds. So that's it, guys. God bless you. Take care. And uh, we will catch up with you soon.